whatever you want to review. Uh, y equals x equals y squared is this parabola that opens sideways. It is not a function. It's not, you, you can't write it as y as a function of x as a single function. On your calculator, you could graph it as two different parts. If you separated it to, um, to, to start with y squared equals x, you could make it y equals plus or minus the square root of x. If you graph plus the square root of x, you get that half. And you get graph minus the square root of x, you, get, you have that half. So if you did it as y1, y2 on your calculator, you can get that. It's, it's expressing x as a function of y, okay? It's, but it's not y as a function of x. It's a function if you look at it the other way. Now, oops, uh, what we want to do is think about what's the derivative here. Well, you could, you can, you know, graphically here, just look at the slope of the tangent line. The derivative at that particular point there is 0.25, right? That's the slope of that line. The derivative as I get closer here, somewhere there, it's uh, 0.36. It's getting higher and higher. What's it going to be if I go right to this point here? Infinite. Or it's, the derivative is actually going to be undefined there because vertical line. Because if I come from this side, they're approaching negative infinity. And if I come from this side, it's positive infinity. We want to be able to find this algebraically here, but we're still looking at the slope of the curve, even though the thing is not expressed as a function. Now what we can do is um, we can use what you call implicit differentiation. You have, when you write a function as y equals some function of x, this is writing a function explicitly. Explicitly means pretty clear, clearly stated Right? If you say something explicitly, uh, it's, it's, it's clearly stated that this is a function of x. You're not implying something. What does it mean to imply something? Say something without actually saying it. You can have an implicit function. Now, this is not an implicit function, but you can because it's not a function. But if it's stated, if something is stated implicitly here, it's not it's not clear what y is as a function of x. Implicit differentiation you're going to use with these implicit relationships here because it doesn't say y equals something. You can't right away say y prime equals something. The shift we're going to make here is we're going to think about we can find this uh, doing exactly what it says here. Um, differentiating both sides and then solving for this. Just like anything else you've learned, you learned uh, obviously what adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing were when you were a very young child. And then later you learned to use them as operations in solving equations. And when you had an equation like this, you learned, oh, I can, I can use this, one of these, as an operation to solve that equation. You can subtract two from both sides. I'm not insulting your intelligence here. I'm reminding you of what you already know. You learned about you learned about uh, you learned about trig functions, right? You learned oh, sir, sine of thirty degrees equals sine of sixty-two degrees equals, and then later you sort of looked at them as operations. Maybe if you had sine of x equals something, you could use this as an operation, sort of on both sides, sine inverse. You do you learned the same about logarithms, right? You learned what is the logarithm of 5, what's the logarithm of 17. And then later you learned you can use them as operations. And if it says 10 to the x equals 17, you can take the logarithm of both sides. So now you, you've you learned what the derivative is, but now we're going to use it as not really an operation, but we're going to differentiate both sides and then isolate. All right, so if you write out that relationship here, y squared equals x. It's not a function of x, but it's a relation between the two things. If you have that now, and you you find the derivative of both sides, so derivative of that side is going to be equal to derivative of this side. If the two sides were equal in the first place, then finding the derivative of both sides has to be 
still equal, right? Just like any other equation you work with, if you do the same operation to both sides of the equation, it should still be equal. Now, we could only do this after we did the chain rule. This side is easy, right? What's this side over here? Derivative of x with respect to x. x is the variable that we're finding the derivative with respect to here. Right? This is what this dx on the bottom means. It means that's the variable we're looking at. This is 1. This says the derivative with respect to x of y squared. If this was the derivative with respect to x of x squared, what would it be? 2x. But it's not x squared. It's, what is it? It's y squared, right? So what's the derivative of y squared? 2y, except it's not d dy. It's derivative with respect to, to x. So this is question mark right now, right? What you have to do is use the chain rule over here. The derivative of this with respect to x is going to be the same as the derivative of that with respect to y times the derivative of y with respect to x. Okay? Does that make sense? <laughs> I like that. Oh, oh I don't get it. <laughs> Uh, what's the derivative of a to the third? You, you need to know what we're finding the derivative with respect to. You need to know what the variable is. If the variable is a, then it's 3a squared, right? But if the variable's not a, if it's some other variable like p, okay, d, d a of that would be 3a squared, right? But if, if you have d, dp of that, or r, or whatever, right? I guess if you're having area, maybe radius would make sense. <laughs> DDR. <laughs> what, is this, what does this give you? I must pay attention when I take your suggestions for letters. <laughs> 3a squared times... Maybe we shouldn't skip a step there. We should say, if we want, we got a cubed to r. We need the derivative all the way there, but we need to do as a chain of that compared to a, and then a compared to r, right? You need the chain rule. If you're doing a cubed, the rate of change is compared to r. You need first the rate of change of that compared to a, and then a compared to r. So if you were going to do the derivative of this, you need derivative compared to a of a cubed, and then multiply that by the derivative of a compared to r. So you need to do it as a chain. a cubed compared to a, and then a compared to r. We need to do the same thing here, and this is what I've done, right? If you want, if you want y squared compared to x, you need to multiply two derivatives. y squared compared to y, and y compared to x. If we wrote it out the way I did over there, it's if you want y squared compared to x, you need y squared compared to y and then y compared to x. Once you have done that, it's not that difficult. That's the key understanding there is you're, 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 most people are okay with taking the derivative of both sides. But then it's the how to deal with this y squared here and seeing that it's not just it's not just 2y the derivative of y squared with respect to x is 2y times dy dx. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, what, you want that back on the side? It's, it's amazing the computer technology they have nowadays. Undo. <laughs> well, now it's called redo. 
I'm going to pause.